Okay, this is going to be a review of Parallels Desktop for Mac OS X. If you don't know what it is, it's basically a virtual machine, but it's really not just any virtual machine. In my opinion, and many other people's opinions, it's the best virtual machine in existence right now. And it runs only on Mac OS X. You can't get it for Windows. Basically, I think just because that OS X can handle this kind of stuff better than Windows can, that's just my opinion on it. I'm not saying that's like set in stone, but that's my God to truth like opinion is that OS X can just run this kind of stuff so much better than Windows could ever hope to. But anyway, if you don't know what a virtual machine is, it allows you to run an operating system within an operating system. Now this is good for multiple reasons, but on, on Mac OS X, the main reason is just for more compatibility. As you know, most schools, most businesses, even just most people use Windows. And not all applications in Windows work with OS X, but now that excuse can no longer really even pertain because for this, the $70 that they charge for this, this application, you can run anything from any operating system right next to all your applications, and this is fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch Parallels here. So you get like a nice menu, you get like a nice little origami fold out brochure type of deal. And you get three options. You can do a new Windows installation, which really you could take out the word Windows. You can install anything from Chrome OS to Windows. Now you could also migrate stuff from your old, from a different computer into under Parallels. Or you could just use the ones that you set up. I have three set up. So we'll go ahead and we'll get right into this. So as you can see, I have, um, well since this is a um, Hackintosh, this is not a legit Mac. So I'm not sure if this will work or not because I do have Windows installed on another partition as you can see up here. I have my Macintosh HD which is what I'm running OS X on. My backup drive which is just for using stuff like I could put all my music there. I, I have all my videos, rec my recorded videos, edited, I have it all on there. All, I, all my movies, it's all on that drive. But this right here is Windows. I have Windows 7 installed. The same one I use to install in Parallels. So. It might work to use that partition, my the boot camp thing. I'm not sure. I haven't tried it, but within OS 10 and within this application, I have three installed. I have Chrome OS, Linux, which is Ubuntu 10.10, .10, and Windows 7. So the first thing that really makes this program shine is the ability to really configure everything that this stuff uses. So we're gonna go ahead and right click, and we'll go to configure. Now, as you can see, I'm configuring Chrome OS. I can name it that if I really want to but Chrome OS suits me. Now, you could really, send, as you can see up here, I have a Core i7-930, which has four cores, but eight threads. So it acts like you have eight cores, and this sees that. This sees that I have all that. So if I really wanted to, I could have Chrome OS running all eight cores, and I also have six gigs of RAM. If you add these up, it'll add up to six. <laughs> or I could just show you for proof. Six gigs. So I could use all six gigs of this if I really wanted to right there but for Chrome OS you don't really need that so I'll give it two cores one gig of RAM now you can configure that for all of these so I'm gonna go ahead and go into Windows 7 since I don't really use these two these are pretty much just for testing purposes to see how it works you know the, the response time it has the boot up time how efficient it is stuff like that but I, I actually do use Windows 7 very often because there's video convert or video converters I like to play some like, basic games on the Windows that I can't do on OS 10 or that the programs aren't out for that on OS 10. So I use them on Windows. So I do use Windows probably every other day or so. So this is great because I can give it four out of my eight cores and I also have two gigs of RAM. But like I said, I only have six gigs of RAM. And the program itself, when it's running a virtual machine, takes about a half a gig. So right here, I'm using two and a half gigs or so when the Windows is running. And I only have six total, so I'd like to have OS 10 still have that much RAM available to use. So I keep it at two gigs. But for Christmas, I asked for six more gigs of RAM, so that would put me at a total of 12. So if I get that, I could probably have this cranked up to like four, maybe even like six, and it would be awesome. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at two and four cores. Now this is per this is I'd say about on par with my old piece, my old PC. Um, that was a Pentium D. 2.6 gigahertz. It was a dual core. It had two gigs of RAM. Now this has four cores of an i7 and two gigs of faster memory. So really, this computer, well, computer, does run. I'd say about as good as my old one. It is a virtual machine. You won't get the full performance if I had like these parts, actual physical parts. 
but this runs at least as good as my old computer does. I think it's faster than my old computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually boot up Windows for you guys. So in order to do that, all you have to do is hit this little power button and it'll go ahead and it'll boot up. Now I have it configured to set um, to run in full screen upon when you wake upon booting. So it, as you can see, it switched my space. As you can see here, it's saying you're now in full screen, just like a little thing. But as you can see here, it's booting. It boots very fast. And as you can see, I'm already at the welcome screen. I'll be at the desktop very shortly. And here you go. But like I said, like I was saying, it switches your space since it runs full screen. And it runs Windows down here. So it, it looks like I'm running a Windows. I mean, this is Windows. I mean, if you were to just see this, you'd think I'm running Windows. But really, I'm running both. But like I was saying, I have, I've given it four cores. I've given it two gigs of RAM. Hopefully, you can see that. But like I said, that's very configurable. Um, configurable, I think that's the word. But anyway, I could give that eight cores if I really wanted to. You know, I could, I can configure this however I want, which is just one of the beauties of this program. So now, it, everything really does run perfectly. I mean, as you can see up here, I am using, like I said, the vast majority of my RAM. But I can, I'll go ahead and I'll go. I'll run a video converter. So I'll do alloc. Great video converter. I highly recommend it. But I'll go ahead and I'll I'll come up to here. I'll just show you guys some basic applications for this. So I'll go to videos, others, my content, videos. And this is where like my videos are stored. So I'll just go ahead and I'll do Hackintosh stress test. Switch spaces, drag it in. So as you can see here, I'll go ahead and I'll change the directory. Yes, yeah, it's already going to the desktop. I'll just leave it there. So and I'll go ahead and start converting, and it's running a Windows converter on top of OS 10 you know all this stuff running and I look at my computer usage it's fantastic I still have you know 75 percent of my computer left however like I said it does consume pretty much all my RAM but even so it it does a phenomenal job and I mean look how smooth it still runs you know it, there's probably some lag due to the screen capture but um, I still have I, th I believe you still get the um, Arrow effects, yeah. See, I still have the you know, you go to the sides and it does the half the screen thing. Go up, you get full screen. You have all the features of Windows. I mean, if you go ahead and look down here, I'll go to properties, and as you can see, I have a 5.5 <laughs> through a virtual machine that's better than my old machine. So, th this, this program does do a fantastic job. It runs Windows perfectly, as you can see here. This, this video converter, I mean, this is. Let's see about a se about six and a half minutes, and it's converting this video. It'll probably take about two through a virtual machine. You know, I mean, that's just that's performance right there. Here, okay, I'll go ahead and stop this. But so now what I want to do is go. I'll go ahead and show you coherence mode. This is the mode that I really love. There we go. There's view. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and we'll go to coherence. Now this is, I like this more than full screen because you can use your window stuff right next to your OS 10 stuff. There's no space for it. So I'll go ahead and I'll demonstrate that now. If you go up here to these little bars, you know, these parallel bars, you know, that's, anyway. <laughs> if you right click it, that's your start menu. So I'll go ahead and I'll open alloc again. So now instead of having to switch spaces and stuff, as you can see, this is right next to my, my um, OS 10 application. So I can go ahead. I'll drag the same video in there. Go ahead and convert it. And I'm running Windows stuff right next to OS 10 stuff. It works with Expose. Clear the desktop, you know, it does, it just works so well. I can even open up Windows Explorer. I'll go ahead and I'll stop this. And have Finder and Explorer right next to each other. Or, you know, God forbid I run Internet Explorer <laughs> on OS 10 awful I don't know why you'd ever do that like seriously do that but maybe you will I don't know but anyway there's also I'll go to the other view we'll go ahead and we'll exit coherence and that should take me back to the window this is the other um, view option you still have you could still minimize it put it right down here so if you're converting something you want it out of your way not in a space you can go ahead and throw it in the dock so that's pretty much all the views I want to discuss um, as you can see, this program just it works so well. I've never seen a virtual machine with the power that Parallels has. I can't recommend it enough. And there's one thing that even makes this you know sweeter of a deal is that you could run multiple operating systems right next to each other. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll shut Windows down. 
be due to RAM restrictions, I'm going to go ahead and run the two less intensive ones. I'm going to go ahead and run Chrome and Ubuntu right next to each other. So I'll go ahead and I'll exit out of that. I believe if you click the yes. So now we get this. So I'll go ahead and I'll boot Chrome and Ubuntu. But you see Chrome open over here and Linux is opening down here and they're both booting. Go ahead and full screen that. Come down here, full screen this one. So this might take it a second. I'll go ahead and activate spaces. We can just kind of watch both and chug it along. So Chrome is open. So hopefully that'll sign in. And as you can see here, we are now running, hopefully, Chrome OS. If we come down here, now Ubuntu is booted up. Now we're running Ubuntu. And now you can go, you guys can see where I'm going with this. If I had more RAM, I could have the same windows I have now with the two gigs. And have Mac OS X in this space, Chrome in this space, Ubuntu in this space, and Windows in this space. And they all run perfectly. I mean, look how smooth it is. You know, this is running perfectly. If I came down here, I could open Mahjong. You know, it, it opens nice and fast. Everything works pretty well. I mean, <laughs> I have no complaints at all. So, I mean, I, I can't really think of an, any other virtual machine that does this. There's VMware for Windows. It's just not as good. That's all I can say is that it's just not as good. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'll go ahead and shut these down. So, we'll just come down here to the power button. We'll hit stop. Stop. Come down here and we'll go to the power thing over here. And we'll shut down and here we are just back to running only OS 10 so now we'll go ahead and we'll quit parallels and just like that I'm now back to one operating system you can see how smooth it runs and that's with a screen capture and keep that in mind it, the performance would be even better without the screen capture going on so that's just phenomenal you could see the power of this application the Core i7 is more than enough to handle it. It does work very well. You could use this on a MacBook and run Windows no problem at all. Um, like I said, there's not much I have against this program. Here's the website. You know, I accidentally clicked buy. <laughs> but yeah, it's $70. I, that's definitely worth it. I really can't, like I said, like I've been saying, I can't think of anything much that's wrong with this application, this program. It runs so well. It does everything that it advertises it does. It says it's the number one choice, and I don't doubt that at all. It just runs so well. It runs everything very smooth. For productivity, I mean, like I said, like I use Final Cut to edit stuff, but sometimes I like to convert it to a better format so that the sequence reads it without having to render it. If I can convert it with that al that Alloc application, that saves me a lot of time because I still haven't been able to find a great video converter. I mean, I found one called Handbrake, which it does okay, but I find that there's more quality loss than if I do it with Alloc. Maybe it's just me. I don't know, but it could be the codec I'm using. But Alloc converts to .mov very fast. As you can see, through a virtual machine with a screen capture, it was still doing a six, a six and a half minute video in about a minute and a half, two minutes. It was just phenomenal. So that's pretty much all I have to say before this video gets any longer. I'm already up to 16 minutes. But if you guys have any questions, go ahead and hit me up at Twitter. I'm at CPU Kid. I hope this helped you guys. If you really want to get into like the virtual machine world, if you have a MacBook or an iMac and you really need to run Windows, I think this is a better alternative than Boot Camp, especially with the performance you get. Like if you have one of the Core 7 i or Core i7 iMacs, this will run Windows perfectly for you without having to restart. That's the big thing here: was not having to restart. You could still have you know your Twitter application. I use like to use Tweety here. I can still have that open without, you know, any, I don't lose anything. I don't have to restart. There's less time wasted, all that good stuff. And there's one more thing that you could even run this from your iPhone. Now, because I have the first generation, I can't use it because of um, iOS firmware restrictions. You can only use it, I think, with 3.2 and up. But anyway, if you have like an iPhone 4, I think even like maybe probably an iPhone 3G or 3GS, you can get the free app here. I have it queued up here in iTunes. And here it is, Parallels Mobile. You can run this on your iPhone and you can tell the application IP address of your computer 
log in and you have access to all those operating systems from your iPhone. Now I'm not saying that they're going to be like, you know, perfectly smooth, you're not going to be able to like watch videos, I doubt, but it, it's very useful to have pretty much any operating system on your machine at your disposal, wherever you are. So it works over Wi-Fi, it works over 3G, I'm not trying to like advertise this, but I just thought that was the coolest thing. So this company has really done their research. Um, Parallels, they it's just fantastic. It's worth every penny. If you're looking, like I said, if you're looking to get into the virtual machine world, if you're looking to, you know, build the Hackintosh or really just have a nice Mac, I can't recommend Parallels enough. I give it probably like 9.9762435 out of 10. There's not much I can I can say that's wrong with this application. It does everything it advertises. It works extremely well, and I can't recommend it enough. So. If you have any questions, then like I said, I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. You can go ahead and send me a um, response video. You could comment the video. Anything you really want to do, a thumbs up is greatly appreciated. And that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching.